Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I re-silicone a quartz worktop and show you the tools I use to get the end result. I'll pass on a few tips and the must-know trick to make this job easier and give you a nice neat finish. Unless you do this type of job day in and day out, this is one of those tricky little jobs that can get messy and can look a bit tragic if not done properly. It's a job that we'll need doing at some point in most houses because maybe there's a bit of yucky mold growing, a leak or in this case the bead is breaking up around the high wear areas. If I don't nip this in the bud now it will only get worse. It's worth having a go at siliconing as it's difficult to find a tradesman just to come in and do little jobs like these so why not give it a try. So I'm planning to do a couple of areas here one behind the sink and also behind the hob. But first, let's go through the tools I usually use. A sharp blade, and ideally a blade that is not too flexible and tough enough to work against the quartz. I'll be using it to cut out the old silicone. Then we have the silicone gun, which you will see me using shortly. A dry paintbrush for sweeping out the bits and pieces between the worktop and the upstand. Some acetate. I usually use methylated spirit but I run out so I've got my cheap bottle, otherwise known as nail varnish remover. It's very important to clean the area with acetate to remove grease etc, especially behind the hob. And this is the secret weapon, the most important trick you need. Window cleaner. A tube of silicone and some kitchen roll. Mistakes some people make, and I have made in the past, is to run a bead of silicone and then run along it with your finger causing an uneven spread and a huge clump of wasted silicone. My window cleaner trick gets around this and makes finishing so much easier. I've also tried using washing up liquid in the past mixed with water, but this is far, far easier and gives a neater finish. I'll show you how to use it later. So let's take a look at what needs to be done. As you can see, this area behind the sink is in need of replacing sooner rather than later in this location with all the water around. Also, the area at the back of the hob needs a new bead. So, first of all, before starting, just make sure the work area is nice and clear and dry. Start by cutting out the old silicone carefully and if you have a plastic scraper of some kind that won't scratch the worktop, this can help you along. You'll see that just cutting out the silicone won't be enough straight away and that some time and patience is needed to pick away all the odd bits of silicone by moving the blade up and down the joint several times to get everything out. Once you're happy you've got out as much as you can, brush out all the debris and then you might need to have a few more goes at it as doing this normally reveals the bits you've missed. After a while, you should have a nice clean joint to work with. Like this. And now it's time to give the joint a good clean with acetate. This means the silicone will adhere nicely once applied. OK, so let's get the silicone ready for applying and pop it into the gun. By the way, I've only cut a very small 45 degree slice off the end of the nozzle as we only want a thin bead to run over the joint as you will see. Get the feel of the pressure you need on the gun before applying and then off we go. A 
The side tip here is to remember to press this metal lever when you're not siliconing, so you release the pressure on the tube. This should avoid too much residual silicone leaking out whilst you are not using it. So, here we have the first bead of silicon. And now, to do the area by the sink. Another tip is not to overfill the gap when applying. Now I'm going to use the window cleaner to help me smooth off the silicone and leave a nice neat bead. The silicone will not stick to the cleaner, which I will show you later on in this video. I spray the window cleaner on the area I'm going to smooth and with a kitchen towel in hand, I gently use my finger to smooth off the silicone. The silicone won't stick to my finger. Don't use too much pressure. Don't do too much at once, just a small stretch at a time. If you do make a mistake, you should be able to remove the silicone and clean the area again and have another go. Or if it's in an awkward spot, you could wait until the silicone is dry and cut out that section and pop a new bead in between with care using the trusted window cleaner. Here's how it looks after the job is finished. Now leave the area to dry thoroughly and check the drying time for the silicone you are using and then you're all good to go. You might have noticed that I decided to do the whole run. This is because there was a color mismatch with the new silicone, so I didn't have much choice really. This should be good for a few years now, I hope. As promised earlier, I wanted to show you why the window cleaner is so useful. Take a look at this. If I pop a bit of silicone onto the card, it's pretty sticky, as you can see. If I spray some window cleaner on here and do the same, you can see how the silicone cannot stick. This will really help you when smoothing the silicone joint by stopping the silicone spreading either side when you run your finger along. I'm no siliconing expert, but I think I can do a half decent job after many years of trial and error. I hope you have found this video useful and it saves you some time and has also given you the confidence to give it a go. If so, please don't forget to subscribe and like, as it would be really appreciated. Until the next time.